It's been five months since the end of Car 2 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime and fans are now waiting for the next installment of the Bleach anime. But there has now been a trend of fans looking back on Part 2 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime and realizing that it may not have been the best adaptation now that the hype for it has died down. Car 2 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime had begun airing on the 8th of July 2024 and this was six months after the conclusion of Car 1. Now this six months worth of time for working on Car 2 may have been the first indication that the production for Car 2 was being rushed and it was not ideal for what fans were expecting. Going into the new adaptation of Bleach, we know that all of the fans want quality over quantity, and they want Kubo and the animation staff to focus on expanding upon the manga and fixing the pacing issues of the original manga. Because the Thousand Year Blood War arc in its original form is notoriously known for rushing through key moments, and this problem with pacing gets worse as the story arc progresses. In this video, we are going to determine the pros and cons for Core 2, we are going to look at the fan backlash and how some certain fans have been treating animators on social media, and lastly, we're going to compile everything together and determine whether if Core 2 was actually as bad as fans are now making it out to be. Discover the Undead Collection and be amongst the very first to join us on our journey over at Getsugard.com. So Kotu of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime adapted 67 and a half chapters worth of manga content and all of this material was spread across 13 episodes. It had spanned from chapter 543 all the way up until the midway point of chapter 609. We had averaged at about 5.2 chapters which were adapted into every episode. Now this was a slightly faster pacing than what we had seen in Core 1 which was averaging at about 4.8 chapters worth of manga content per episode. Looking back on Car 2, there are some episodes that do appear to rush through some aspects of the story. This does appear to be understandable because Kubo and the anime staff were building up to an epic finale which featured heavily reworked material from the manga and honestly the finale for Car 2 is unrecognizable from its manga counterpart. Car 2 had continued the trend that was established within Car 1 as comedic moments were cut from the anime, any scenes that weren't really important to the plot were also admitted in order to streamline the story. This was all done under the supervision of Tight Kubo. Now everything appears to have been worth it because we ended up with several notable anime only scenes which ended up replacing some of the cut material from the manga. Now while Core 2 was wrapping up with its final few episodes that were left to air, animators were receiving death threats from fans on social media with how dissatisfied they were with part 2 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Things got so bad that these fans were sending death threats and abuse to several Bleach animators and it resulted in animators anime staff are leaving Piro as they were fed up with working on Bleach because of the constant negative criticism from fans who were tagging them in Twitter posts. I'm going to talk about this later because fans are now once again messaging animators and in particular the director of the Bleach anime Tomohisa Toguchi as they have been advising him to work harder and to make sure that Core 3 is not a disappointment. There is honestly so much that I could say but before that I want to give my thoughts on Core 2 as an entire retrospective and talk about the pros and cons of this batch of 13 episodes that we received from July to September of last year. Now in terms of the overall art quality of Core 2, it has far fewer dips in its quality than in comparison to Core 1, as the staff have now become more acquainted with Kubo's art style, so the art is usually on model for a good majority of the time. Core 1 featured several episodes which were off model, like episode 1 or 8. So one thing that Core 2 is going for it is the overall improvement in art consistency. Another bonus is that the storyboarding for Core 2 is consistently better than Core 1. Now because of this improved storyboarding, it led to a lot of impressive and memorable scenes. For example, Kimpachi's meteor scene during his battle against Grammy. It's hard to deny that the overall animation quality of Core 2 was more consistent, but this had come in exchange for lower quality animation. Unfortunately, we basically traded quality for quantity in this regard, which made it so that every fight was decent to look at, but less individually impressive. So to be honest, this could either be a strength or a weakness, depending on how you look at it. Now, one of the most insane things about Core 2 was the amount of anime original content that they were able to squeeze into the 13 episodes. And I think some 
some of these anime original scenes featured a lot of Sakuga moments that I feel that Bleach fans should have appreciated a bit more. Now, I'm not saying that fans don't have a right to be disappointed, but I think that the prospect of having original anime-only content is more interesting than just focusing on the quality of the animation. We had anime original scenes featuring Shinji's Bankai, new scenes between Uryu and Hashwald, and not to mention how the Zero Division were completely reworked into the finale of Core 2, as we even got to see the Bankai of Senjumaru, which was on nobody's radar. These were very unexpected additions that were made. Now, taking all of this into consideration, if fans are still dissatisfied with Core 2 of the anime, they can at least try to enjoy it for Kubo's sake, as he is working really hard behind the scenes by including all of these additional moments that weren't included in the manga. Fans who have gone to the Bleach art exhibition have seen the storyboards that Kubo had drawn for scenes like Senjumaru's Bankai or even Shinji's Bankai. He had literally drawn out page for page how Senjumaru's Bankai works, as well as the incredible Soul King flashback sequences that we've been seeing in Core 2, and it's evident that Kubo has performed anime staff roles here in order to heighten the enjoyment of Bleach fans. Moving on to some of the negative aspects of Core 2, it's undeniable that there were limited backgrounds and environments for the anime staff to showcase, as the backgrounds for Core 1 and the constantly changing atmosphere was one of the strengths for the first part of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Part 2 of the anime limits this, and for almost the entirety of Core 2, we are stuck with a bland red sky and far less impressive backgrounds, which had overall lowered the quality of Core 2's aesthetic. It is painful to talk about all of this stuff, but if we're being very blunt and realistic, there was far worse CGI and visual effects overall in Core 2. This wasn't helped by the six months worth of production time, which had limited what the anime staff were able to achieve within this batch of 13 episodes. And this lack of production time is most visible in how worse the CGI and visual effects are. Now, in Core 1, the CGI was mostly good and it blended extremely well with their 2D backgrounds and characters. But overall, Core 2 had featured far worse CGI with the worst offender being Seijin Komamura's Bankai form Dangai Jo. In addition to this, there was a lot of visually noisy effects that were used, and this is in stark contrast to how visual effects were utilized during Core 1 of the anime, with the visual effects in those first 13 episodes doing so much to complement the scenes in Core 1. I mean, some of the CGI textures that were placed upon effects in Core 2 were extremely loud, and it resulted in the actual animation of the episode being drowned out by these noisy effects. Some of the worst examples from this can be taken from Ichibei vs. Yuhabak, as well as Bambietta's holy form. The visual effects feel far less intentional on Core 2, and they don't complement the animation as well as they do in Core 1. Compare what we see in Core 2 to some of the fantastic textures that were used in Yamamoto vs. Yuhobak, and even the visual effects that were showcased in Yuhobak's Circle of Torment, which were shown to us in Episode 7 of Core 1. Another negative is that there was a lot less participation from series director Tomihisa Taguchi, as Taguchi had storyboarded about four full episodes in Core 1, but he had only partially storyboarded two episodes for Core 2. And somehow, Hikaru Murata, the worst storyboarder, ended up being the one who had storyboarded Episode 26, which is partially why it was so underwhelming. The only good parts of the episode was Senjumaru's Bankai, which was in fact storyboarded by Kubo himself, like I mentioned earlier. Some fans are disappointed at Taguchi for not really being there to storyboard a lot of Core 2. In general, Core 2 overall lacked a strong sense of action animation, as we had lost Yoshihiro Kano, which had really hit the production of Core 2 hard. And as a result, the quality of the action in Core 2 had also taken a dip. The sheer number of fights that are involved in Core 2 and the little time that the anime staff had to work on them made it hard for incredible animators on the team to make great sequences of animation. And this is coupled with the limited time that they had because I have to continuously remind you that Core 2 had pretty much six months of production time. And then you have very talented individuals like Hiroyuki Yamashita who did notably less work in Core 2. Because of how thinly spread the action animation is, we never really get the excellent peaks that we see in Core 1, and this leads to fans having less hype and the reception for Core 1 suffering as a result, due to the fact that most anime fans tend to only remember the peaks in animation, which is why Demon Slayer fans still remember Season 2's finale even though it was the only standout episode of that season. And it's why fans seem to appreciate Core 2 far less even though it did overcome a good number of problems that Core 1 had. And this is despite the fact that Core 
2 had way more anime original scenes than Car 1. Now the lack of visual variety in some of the scenes and backgrounds made a lot of Car 2 feel more bland and a bit dark unlike Car 1 which was more visually expressive. But this could be explained by Car 2 just covering far less locations in comparison to what Car 1 did. Hence why Car 2 ended up having a very limited look. So I do think it's a matter of weighing out all of the pros and cons because the vast majority of Car 2 had taken place within the dome that had covered the Serete, with most of the scenes occurring in this icy blue cityscape with this deafening red sky. Now, there were some pacing problems in Car 2. While Car 1 also had its fair share of problems with its pacing, Car 2 was the peak of everything, with how much that it had crunched down some content from the manga, which had resulted in some fights not really living up to their potential. Now, I'm talking about key battles like Kimpachi vs. Grammy and also Ichigo vs. The Sternritter. Along with the bizarre decisions to opt for slower pacing with lower priority chapters like the zombie saga and the early parts of the second invasion, it baffles me as to why the pacing wasn't adjusted more appropriately because so many fans were looking forward to Kimpachi vs. Grammy and it definitely needed to be slower in its pacing. I think that one and a half or two episodes would have been enough to cover such an iconic battle. So it's a combination of bad pacing in portions of the story that needed to be slower and in general good pacing in sections of the story where it wasn't really necessary. Now, after having shared my pros and cons for Core 2, there's been a lot of outpouring of dissatisfaction from fans with mixed reactions regarding Core 2. Fans have voiced several concerns, like their dissatisfaction with the art and animation quality of Core 2, despite Kubo and the animators in Jump Festa 2023 promising that there was going to be an overall improvement in Core 2 in comparison to the first Core. Now, this sense of hype and build-up from these comments had led to fans being disappointed once Core 2 had aired as they'd believed that the animation team had failed to deliver on their promises. The overall consensus is that there is inconsistency and a lack of impactful moments in Core 2. Now this is what I was talking about when I was saying that there's no real standout high quality moment in Core 2 which is etched into the memory of fans. Despite Core 2 having so much anime original content, because in that regard Core 2 is definitely better than Core 1 as it features so many more additions to the manga and I believe that it has way more involvement from Kubo than Car 1. There are several standout moments that disappointed fans, with pivotal fights like Hitsugaya vs. Basby and Kimpachi vs. Grammy being criticized for their lack of fluidity as well as having rushed pacing and scenes that were entirely cut from the anime, which leads to these very important fights being robbed of their impact. Again, like I mentioned earlier, fans are also disappointed with the lack of detail in the backgrounds, citing the red sky as one of the main issues, comparing it to like a bland laptop wallpaper. But again, I don't know how this is the fault of the animation team, because this is just the setting of where the majority of Core 2 had taken place. Now, for an anime adaptation which had promised to build and accept expand upon the content of the manga, it is really disappointing when some of the moments in the anime rapidly progress through the story, leaving very little room for these iconic moments to breathe. I mean, the later portions of the Thousand Year Blood War arc are rushed within the manga, so I'm guessing that they are trying to rush through the first half of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, so that fewer chapters are left to adapt in Core 3 and 4, so that they can include way more anime original scenes. I really do hope that this is the case, because there is no other way to excuse how much that they are cramming into certain episodes. Again, I don't know why they decided to cram such a vast number of chapters into the Kimpachi vs. Grammy fight which is pretty much done in a single episode, leading to about eight and a half to nine chapters worth of content being adapted into that one episode. I think slowing down the pacing and allowing for there to be a lot of breathing room does so much to improve the engagement of the viewer, and it allows the viewers to build a connection to the story and to the characters. While we are aware of who Kimpachi Zaraki is, I feel like anime-only fans who have only experienced Bleach via that medium may not have a proper grasp of the character of Grammy because of of how little screen time he had due to the rushed pacing. Despite these negative points, fans do love all of the additional scenes that were present in Core 2, such as the expansion upon the role of Squad Zero, Ichigo's extended battle sequence against the Bambis, seeing new scenes of Byakuya battling against the Sternritter, as well as the additional scenes of Hashward and Uryu, Shinji's Bankai and Senjumaru's Bankai. All of these things were received very positively, and in general, these additions added a lot of depth to the narrative, and they provided 
into so much context that just wasn't present within the manga. While I wasn't the biggest fan of the opening of Core 2, it seems as though the opening and ending sequences of Core 2 were widely praised for their creativity and fans really grew to love the opening and ending for this part of the anime. The anime also has one major addition which improves the viewing experience of fans by using colours in order to portray the individual holy forms of the Sternritter. I personally really love these additions too, how each of the colours represents and reflects the ratio of the different Sternritter. It is a difficult balance to strike, with fans who are now used to the high levels of animation that we are seeing in anime like Demon Slayer or the Wano arc of One Piece, as well as high moments in Core 1 and even the original Bleach anime, Core 2 definitely does lack in some aspects in comparison to all of these other series. This is primarily because of the fewer members of staff who are working in Core 2 and the dramatically shortened production time that Core 2 had, which definitely impacted its quality. So it's definitely a challenge for the animation director Tomisa Toguchi to meet the exceedingly high expectations of anime fans by topping past achievements and doing justice to highly anticipated moments from the manga which fans cannot wait to see animated. And when justice isn't done to these moments, they unfortunately take to social media platforms and criticise the animators themselves, which only leads to the animators being disheartened or not wanting to work on that project anymore. Let me draw your attention to this tweet from Tomohisa Toguchi from just this weekend where he had retweeted this promotional tweet for the physical media release of Core 2 and under this tweet there is a slew of criticism from fans who are expecting more for Toguchi. I mean look at some of these comments. This one fan says, for many of us, Core 2 was a massive letdown. Do you plan to get more involved and direct more in Core 2? We want the fights to have better animation and choreography. A lot of the fights feel so rushed and blitzed through. Episode 6 and 7 was great but that's it. I mean to tweet this under the director of the anime, this is somebody who is working on the storyboards, who is also doing animation for Core 2. It is absolute insanity and it's something that is unacceptable. I mean these animators are not going to your workplace and criticizing how you work and most of the time the issues that fans have with these anime isn't because of the animators. I mean god knows they are working the best that they can with the limited time that they are given and they are still able to produce a very serviceable product. While it isn't the best in quality, what else can you do when they are under tight deadlines and schedules that are set in place by production committees and the higher ups at Studio Piero? I mean what are you going to achieve by tweeting under Taguchi's post by saying that part 2 was very messy and downgraded from production and they hope to see Taguchi focus and participate more on Core 3 and 4, these people who are tweeting under the posts of anime staff have absolutely zero sense and I think that they have very little workplace experience. <laughs> these posts are just really offensive and they grind my gears and I know that these people overall just want the Bleach anime to have better quality but they're going about it in the wrong way. Look at this one tweet from this individual who tells Taguchi to just focus on Bleach, we've waited for 10 years and we supported the franchise until the announcement of the comeback so please do your job properly because Bleach fans deserve a great adaptation. This is absolutely wild. Why would you post this to the series director? If you're that entitled to think that your opinion really does matter and your dissatisfaction with the product needs to be expressed, just don't go about expressing it to the people who are tirelessly working on making this product be serviceable under the very difficult working conditions that they are under. You need to be expressing all of this criticism to Studio Piero higher-ups and to the production committee who are putting Bleach under this very tight schedule but even then don't expect anyone from Japan to listen to the entitled ramblings of western anime fans. It just doesn't work like that. Whenever I see this kind of stuff I'm very quick to call it out because it's absolutely unacceptable. Nobody should be messaging animators anything but love and support. On the plus side there is a lot of positive improvements within Studio Piero and I spoke about them in my latest Naruto update video which I posted a couple of weeks ago where we discussed that there is restructuring going on in Studio Piero as they are shifting from their old business model to this new one which focuses on quality over quantity. And one major indication of this improvement is that Core 3 is not airing 6 months after Core 2. If that was the case then we could expect Core 3 to air at the end of April, early May but it's not going to be. Some fans have speculated that Core 3 is going to be airing in July while others expect a fall 2024 release in October. Personally. I think the later the better. I want Core 3 to have so much time dedicated to it and I hope that the animation staff are given this time. So in my opinion, Fall 2024 seems like the best choice for airing Core 4. 
Now we've reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you guys think about Core 2 overall? Looking back at it in hindsight, was it a bad anime adaptation or are you impressed with what was achieved in Core 2? In my opinion, that was definitely areas for improvement, but I don't think that it was a bad product overall. We had a ton of anime original scenes. We had so many moments that really lived up to the expectation of fans. And personally, I wouldn't say that I was disappointed with Core 2. I look forward to seeing what changes will be made to the Blue Ray release of Core 2, so you can definitely expect a Blu-ray comparison video for Core 2 later this month when it officially releases. Now definitely continue the discussion in the comments, let me know your thoughts about Core 2 and your expectations for Core 3, and what do you think about entitled fans who think that it's okay to message the director of the Bleach anime. Once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.